As we stand in the midst of a future that no one could have envisioned, Cloud Imperium Games has entered a phase of Star Citizen's development that everyone thought was impossible. For the third consecutive month, an update worth talking about is being delivered, and that's only the tip of the Chris Roberts iceberg with tons of exciting news rounding out the final chunk of this year. It's time for Star Citizen Alpha 321.1 and more! With the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo knocking at our wallet, CIG is gearing up for their biggest payday of the year and possibly the entire project as players get their chance to take a look at every ship in the game that has been magically teleported inside of these gigantic rooms. This year, as you do your wind sprints across this massive venue to admire ships of all shapes and sizes, be sure to take a break stopping off to witness the majesty of these exciting dioramas. Whether you're taking in the thrilling depictions of ground-pounding mining or the exhilaration of these boxes you can wander blissfully through in the cargo section, you'll be enlightened even as you travel the spaces between the arenas. After you've crept into the murky basement and taken a sneak peek at the holograms of ships and vehicles that live perpetually on the horizon, you can finally get down to the real reason you logged in in the first place, renting those new ships. The first new ship to carve its way into the hearts and credit cards of backers is the second variant of the Crusader Spirit Line, the C-1. This beautiful new cargo-hauling beast of burden tosses out the bombs of the A-1 and replaces them with a roomy room for all of your favorite boxes to peacefully rest. Further in, you can take a break in this centralized in-between space where all of your components live tucked into the walls nestled between these two doors. Then we move inward to the now familiar cockpit with the still magnificent shitter shower, the privacy-free tandem bed pods, and the cozy twin-seat control scheme to take the helm of this shiny new machine. Yet rather than the co-pilot controlling a lame old turret, they'll get access to the introduction of the brand new industrial tractor beam. Now you can forgo the dangers of the blood-boiling vacuum to load and unload crates into the back of your ship and instead manipulate your cargo with your ass safely ensconced in the luxurious seat of an air-filled cockpit. But with the C-1 Spirit's upgrade from 48 to 64 SEU of capacity now rivaling the Freelancer, you'll be forced to make the difficult choice between that frumpy old space penis with a boring-ass turret or the sleek, sexy cargo-hauling sky knife with the infinite fun of a cool-ass tractor beam. Those cool-ass tractor beams aren't just for cool-ass new ships, though. They've also made their way to every ship that was supposed to have them, such as the classic Consolidated Outlands Nomad finally letting you fill your hovering Cybertruck without even looking out this useless back window. But some of these new tractor beams aren't just for cargo. The Vulture takes a unique approach that can't load cargo at all. Instead, your brand new tractor beam will take a slot from one of your dual salvage beam fingers instead of wasting valuable space literally anywhere on this otherwise empty front section of your favorite flying field goal post. Yet with this distinctly convenient location, you can grab hold of that busted space junk and give it a spin, letting you scrape it clean like an ear of corn. This rapid expansion of the tractor factor isn't relegated to the front and back of ships though. You may have thought your simple pocket-sized multi-tool attachment was all you needed to lift even the biggest of boxes, but now you can pick up a rifle-sized dedicated tractor beam that can move entire ships around in space and even finally right your flipped-over vehicles right after they fixed vehicles always flipping over. Sometimes though, you need a little more than a flip to get yourself going again, and that's where the all-new Argo SRV comes in. This rugged-looking piece of heavy equipment gives you all the basic amenities that you'd expect from a single-seat utility ship, including a pop-out cargo belly that you definitely shouldn't hang out in, a pleasant sleeping pod, your own personal shit or shower, and a friend-accommodating dining table overlooking the biggest of ass tractor beams that money can buy. That's right, now not only can you sling all but the heftiest of ships around, but you can pick them up and tow them across the galaxy and bring them wherever they're needed for reasons that gameplay may one day justify. But this update does have some new gameplay, and this time it's specifically for the dedicated criminals out there. Data heists are ready for the taking and will once again boomerang you back to those classic underground facilities that you could probably make your way through blindfolded at this point. As you deftly navigate your way to those servers in the back, you should probably have disabled the local comm array because you're gonna be murdering. After sliding a card into the slot and watching this progress bar fill with the speed of Star Citizen's development, the servers will slowly start to overheat. Now you get to race to random spots all around the familiar facility to find some numbers that will allow you to turn on the fans and murder a few more people. After you've waded through the corpses, collected your payout, and hopefully avoided perpetual jail time, you can finally hop into one more new vehicle, the Tumbrel Storm. 
This recent addition to the world of ground vehicles that have no purpose will let you take on gravity-bound threats in a whole new way. It only takes one individual to run this tracked armored bodysuit and you'll be zooming across the terrain ready to take on whatever threats you can potentially damage with a single size 3 gun. It's even smaller than the much more powerful Nova tank so you can hot dog down a hallway with a C2 Hercules but still can't slide into the bed of your favorite pickup truck or really any ship you'd want to use a solo vehicle with. If you are dedicated to the idea of going solo, you might want to take a look at the latest interpretation of a starter ship, the Gatak Sulin. If you've ever wanted to know what it was like to drive a probe from StarCraft II, you'll finally have the chance with this human hybrid Xion design monstrosity. But before you fly it, you'll have to figure out how to get in. It's not this button that creates a little, uh, whatever this thing is, and it's not one of the three baskets hanging off the sides holding six SCU of cargo. All you need to do is pop out a set of magic stairs and you're ready to step inside this multi-level abstract art piece. The first level gives you access to a cozy looking suit pod and most of your components behind a dancing wall of alien shapes. Hop onto your personal elevator to pop up to the second floor for the comfort of your stone adorned bed alongside the angular comfort of a bathroom. One that features not only the necessary shitter shower but also an alien shitter shower. You can even raise up this incredible space-saving seat that keeps this area open for any standing you'd like to do so you can sit down and take a nice long look at this wall. Now your last stop is the top of this tower of starter ship power where you'll be greeted by your own personal throne. Climb aboard and be flipped, switched, and zipped even higher to your lofty cockpit experience. But rather than taking off like every other ship in the game, you're lying on your back staring at the ceiling and you've got to shimmy your way out of the hangar without ripping off a limb. However, once you're flying, you can feel the immense power of 24 maneuvering thrusters to keep this flying collection of connected sticks in the air. And when you're finished, you can head back to the hangar to limbo your way back in. Just make sure you lock up your floating stairs on the way out. Though if you do leave them open, you won't have to worry quite so much about unwanted intruders sniffing around your ship because the ship trespass system will turn every hull into the state of Florida and let you gun them down without mercy. Star Citizen Alpha 321.1 We may not have pyro, but we finally got some more beams. But wait, don't we have pyro? No! That road to pyro is still just a road to some nice looking clouds at the end of several enticing signs. However, we did get a taste of pyro with the Pyro Preview Channel. Here, a delicious slice of hot fresh pyro system was handed to us and we got to explore appealing places with attractive names like Orbituary, Gaslight, and Rat's Nest. All of these lovely locations give you that rustic, I'm probably gonna get hepatitis tetanus aids feeling that stands in stark contrast to even the shittiest of locations in Stanton. But you do get the pleasure of enjoying things like fresh bottles of brown water, noodles you can actually eat, and the delectable treat of sea nuts whenever you'd like. But if you manage to find your way out of these mazes of garbage and clinical depression and spawn a ship that isn't immediately destroyed in the hangar by someone who thinks being a piece of shit is an appealing personality trait, you can venture to three of the six new planets available. Each has plenty of unique biomes and features and even new missions that have you hunting down a ridiculous number of enemies in this lawless system. At least until the sun starts to freak out and tries to kill you. As soon as you recover from your temporary blindness, you'll need to take cover until that deadly solar flare ends and you can continue your carefree murder spree of anyone who dares look at you crossways. But even with all this pyro preview playability, it isn't the end of content coming to Star Citizen. CitizenCon brought us a metric fuckton of new things coming down the line, including the most important thing, that Squadron 42 is feature complete. We are feature complete on Squadron 42 but still doesn't have a release date. So you will not get a release date from me today. But we did get to see more of it in action, including bagpipes, laser grids, Half-Life 2 physics, minimal space combat, more of Mark Hamill being a national treasure, and the futuristic marvel of boats. There's much more in these two days of content than anyone could ever cover without missing something important to someone. So let me know in the comments what your favorite feature was. Mine, as you should know by this point from watching these update reviews, is that sometime in the possibly near future they'll finally fix the goddamn star map. Not only will we be able to see where we are in space, we'll be able to see where we are on planets, the local area, and ships as well. Maybe it was actually worth the years of pain to have a map that does the things a map is supposed to do. Oh, and a new Drake Cutter variant came out that's just like the Drake Cutter, but they traded two SCU for being able to scan further because scanning hasn't been updated, so it was the perfect time to get another ship in the game that does it. 
If you'd like to see more information about previous updates in an almost informative way, check out my other Star Citizen videos here.